Hi, Ryan. Hey, man. <laughs> What's happening with you? What's happening? How are you? You know what? I'm pretty good. That's That seems like about all we can ask for right now. I feel like pretty good is pretty good, you know? Yeah, yeah, we'll take it. There's, you know, I, 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 I think today is the first day that I just sort of embraced. Fook it, bruv. Fook it, bruv. <laughs> it is what it is, bruv. It's all fooked anyhow. Exactly. It's all fooked anyhow. Moment, we might as well have some fun while we're fooked. I think the moment for me was when I was scream singing uh, under the sea into. Instagram live for 23 people last night and having the time of my life. And my wife texted me that whatever the fuck I was doing, woke up our dog. That's, um, that's some next level, next level quarantine busying. What I know you did that. Uh, what what else you've been doing to busy yourself in quarantine? Well, see, the thing is, this is what I do every day. And so for the most part, business as usual. Yeah, sure. I mean, as much as possible, you know, with the exception of like, you know, a good like three hundred percent more stress added to everything. Sure, but, sure, uh, sure. Trying to do basically the same shit. Right on, right on. Yeah, I'm with yeah. it. I'm with it. Put out a Patreon episode today. We did, yeah. If you go to Patreon.com/slash What If Podcast, the uh, the super homie Rob uh, did a story time with Uncle Rob. It's a new segment we're doing on the Patreon, uh, and Rob tells an alien story, and Spencer scored I, it to make it sound real, real, <laughs> real delightful. I think he called it Uncle Rob's Alien Story Time, but either way is great. You know, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, yeah, we're while the world is upside down and folks are on quarantine and things are kind of weird, we're going to be putting out more content on there and on our Instagram. Uh, so if you want sort of like daily mini sods and like some extra just bullshit to kind of help us all have some fun, go check it out at patreon.com slash what a podcast or go follow us on Instagram and we'll be doing some Instagram lives. We did Instagram live yesterday for the first time. That worked pretty well. We did a pretty good job. Yeah. yeah. We did a pretty good job. And, you want to do uh, that for a minute after we're done here? Fuck it. Yeah, bud. Let's do it. Okay. Sweet. You're only going to YOLO once. You know what I mean? So for the <laughs> first time, I think in the history... Oh, wait. We got a what? We got a joy segment first. We do got a joy. We do got a joy. What What has been bringing you joy in the last week-ish? <sighs> hmm. Hmm. Or less than a week, because we put out last week's episode mad late. Mad late, because... Because the world was upside so the down. Last, the last three days, what do you got? Um, you know, I got to say, I have been... Uh, <laughs> this is real, and this is going to sound mad dumb, but you know what? Fuck it. This is my joy, and you can't take it away from me or judge it. I've been eating Cheez-Its, bro. And like, here's yeah. the, here's the thing, man. Cause they're delicious Cause they're, and there are so many kinds and they're all delicious. See, okay. Yes. And I'm so glad you feel this way because <laughs> a, it's a top, it's a top five snack food, like just straight up. It is. And I'm, and I will easy, take no, easy, easy. and I'll take no other slander. Okay. The white cheddar cheese. It's our bomb. Uh, I ate some literally today. See, they're fucking great. <laughs> and here's the thing, like I, I'm going to be 400 pounds by the time we're done with this shit okay, by the way. Okay. Yes, bro. Sorry. This cuz this is where I was going <laughs> with this, which is that like we, The gym's closed. I got more food in my house than I've ever had and I haven't been outside in, in days. 100%. You nailed you nailed literally everything I was going for. It was like that's my, it. And my booze consumption has tripled. Yes. Literally. <laughs> God. Okay. If you if you literally like read my mind and said what I was about to say, I can't be the only one that feels this way. And also like it's not just it's not just the volume of food we do have. Like, you know, we, we didn't like we're not hoarding, but like we stocked up to be cool to not really go anywhere for like two or three weeks. But like we also were just like, nah, fuck it. What's shelf stable? And it's like snacks, like crackers, like fucking <laughs> So what rice, you're saying is you have you carbs instead of you may not be sick, but you do have scurvy. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. You know I put lime in my gin, man. You know I put lime in my gin. Uh, yikes. Mix in an orange once in a while. I actually ate a salad for dinner, trying to, I had a, you know, I had a salad. every once in a while put some some green things in my body. I had a salad literally 30 minutes ago. Part of the reason I couldn't start exactly when I said we were going to start was because I was finishing my nice. salad. 
Nice. But no, like we do have some, like we have some, we have plenty of like, you know, good food. I had, I've been eating cuties. You remember cuties? I haven't had a cutie in a hot the, minute. The little orange tangerine, whatever the fuck, the clementines. Yeah, That's what they are. Clementines. Delicious. There it is. Delightful. Uh, no, but I've been eating like I've been eating so food. some. I've been allowing <laughs> food, myself. Food has been bringing you joy. Yes, I guess what I'm trying to say <laughs> yeah. is I've been allowing myself junk food because I never really like we never buy junk food and there's just like slightly more junk food than normal in our house and I've been like, you know, it's tight cheez its because I don't really eat cheez its very often because I've been allowing myself food. junk food for 33 years. I'd highly recommend it. <laughs> oh yeah, but anyway, man, yeah, eating. Eating in uh, eating in quarantine has has actually yeah, dude, eating, been a relatively enjoyable experience. Eating is great. Food is the best. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go with that. For that's my answer for today. What's uh, uh, what's your joy? What is this joy? It's been a really good excuse to just like check in with people that and like talk to people in a in a way that you don't normally talk to people yeah. when you're just like like just calling people and be like hey you you okay you doing all right right you need right. anything right um and like I, I feel like there's been a little bit if there's been any silver lining it's been like people trying to help each other out and take care of each other a little bit when you can totally man banding together and being like well this isn't great for anybody so let's- right and also let's just all be as weird as we can on the internet preach man which I'm all for. Also, we've been doing it for three years, so <laughs> you got. And this is not not how I thought we were going to get socialism, but God damn it, we're we're getting closer to socialism. <laughs> <laughs> Mitt Romney wants universal basic income now, so <laughs> fuck it. Let's go. Democratic socialism just comes crashing down around us uh, from Mitt Romney of all places. From Mitt Romney of all places. Let's let's fucking go. Yeah, but anyway, here we are. Um, I think and I, I'm gonna say a thing that I think you were literally about to say before we did our "Is It Joy" uh, segment. I was gonna say we have a first tonight. Yeah, and I think I know what that first is, which is we're gonna record an episode where I literally don't know what the episode is about. Yes, is that right? Is that what you were gonna Correct. say? Sick. Yeah, I think that's that's the first time that we've ever done that on episode. What is this gonna be like? A hundred and eighty or something? Or we're at one eighty something. Yeah, right? yeah, something like that. Uh, last week was. God, my internet is just not happy these days. Dump- dumpy. Yeah. Dumpy. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. In the previous hundred and eighty-five, I think episodes, uh, we have not done this. So here we go. I I do think. I do think there's been episodes where you've been like, hey, this is what the episode's going to be about. And I've been like, all right, bet. I I literally have told you nothing today. Yeah. Don't like I was like expecting to get from you today. Be like, all right. So this is what we're talking about tonight. And just straight up. You were like, hey, what time do you want to record? And I was like, "Okay, going in blind, (laughs) straight up blind. I found one. Let's give it a shot. All right, dog. So give it to me. November 9th, 1979. Mm hmm. In Ryan, one of your favorite locations, Ooh. Livingston, Scotland. Scotland. <laughs> We're about. Can you guess uh, what the nearest city might be? We're about twenty miles west of. I've got a wee guess. <laughs> okay, it, it might be Edinburgh. It is. We're about twenty miles west of there, Lit. in the Denchmont, in the Denchmont Woods. Every name of everything is cooler in the UK. Yeah. Dude, last night I was I was being a uh, Sebastian or a Canadian Sebastian for Lydia's version of the Little Mermaids. Just outrageous. But but a couple times it slipped into like sort of a Scottish, sort of an Irish thing. Yeah, you did. Cuz I was going for like the Nova Scotia can- Canadian accent, which is like a little bit Irish and then sometimes it just got like real real sloppy Irish. Dude, that reminds me, this is a this is probably a stupid aside, but I'm going to tell it anyway. I was watching a rap battle the that's other night. Really, that's <laughs> really all that we do here. It's literally our whole show Preach. is stupid asides. I was watching a rap battle the other night, the other night and this guy was battling was from Scotia, no, Nova Scotia. Scotia Nova? Wait, wait, but the, there's a reason I said it that way because the, <laughs> the guy he was battling is from Virginia and he's like, he's like, where are you from? The mean streets of Canada? He's like, and then, and then the, the guy raps at him, he goes... Scotia Nova? Did I pronounce it wrong? 
was I supposed to know it? <laughs> like, just totally <laughs> roasting dude for being like from from the from the bum fucks, if you will. Mm. You're right. That was a pretty worthless aside. Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> this is a, look. I've done no research. All I'm going to be here for is worthless asides tonight. It's true. So we're in the Denchmont Woods of Livingston, Scotland. Okay. No, November 9th, 1979. It is 10 a.m. And a gentleman named Robert Taylor was a forestry worker for the Livingston Development Corporation. Cool. I bet he has a and mustache. He, was, uh, he did not. Oh, come on. Sorry. No mustache for Bobbert. And he's out. Uh, his job was to make sure that no cattle or sheep wandered into the woods, which okay. is apparently a job in Scotland. Okay. And to trim trees and maintain fire breaks. So there are like intentional sections of these woods, I guess, where they keep trees a certain distance apart from each other so that if there is a fire, it's contained to one section of the forest. Yes. Was not a thing I knew about, but I'm also not real informed about a lot of things. I did not I did know about this. So he was trimming trees and putting sheep back on the road. Cool. He's 61 years old, and he's walking. He drives to work, and he has to park off of the M8 freeway okay. and walk in, walk into this area where he's going to be trimming some trees and stuff. Sure. So he's out there with his dog, parks the truck, and walks into these woods. And this was an area, like, this was part of his normal routine. He was in this area frequently. And as he walks in... He gets, I don't know, a few minutes into the woods and comes up to this clearing where he sees a dark gray metallic dome about 20 feet across and 30 feet high just sitting in the middle of the clearing. Tight. So a a giant UFO, basically. Tight. Here for it. And around, there's like a sort of a, a rim around the edge of it. So if you imagine like two bowls stuck together, there's like a, in the middle, there's like a seam. Sure. And there are a bunch of what Bob called small propellers sticking up like vertically out of this rim. Okay. So. Like, like little, like as if a helicopter blade would be, but like many around the outside rim of this thing. It's almost like, you know those little things that people will stick in their yards that when the wind blows, they're like usually made out of like shiny yes. metallic paper? Mm, yes, I do. So something like that. Pinwheels. Except that they're me- Pinwheels. Yeah, they're, that's the word. Yep. Like that, but metal. Okay. And they're not, they're not moving. It's not really clear why he thought they were propellers other than like sort of the general shape of them. Sure. Anyway, it's a bunch of little things sticking around the rim. And as he's stare, standing, like staring at this thing, sections of it kind of like fade in and out of sight. So he's looking at, it and like one section will become transparent, and suddenly he can see the trees and stuff behind it. Okay. And then it be, and then it becomes opaque again. So he's standing in this clearing, staring at a UFO that's coming in and out of existence, and he smells a like burning rubber smell uh, he described as he said quote burning breaks like break like the rubber or ceramic brake liners sure 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 this thing made no sound it's just sitting there and he walks up a little bit closer to it and two smaller spheres that he estimated were about four feet across come out of the bottom of this craft oh and going he describes them as he describes them as looking like sea mines. Oh. So, you know, like, it, like I guess maybe World War II-ish era. Oh, yeah. Like the big metallic spheres that had the spoky, uh, the pokey spikes sticking out of them. Yeah, they were spiky, but they were like like nubs, not like super sharp pointy points. Yeah. So he sees these four-foot balls with these like kind of... Blunt, I, blunt spikes, I guess, sticking out of them. I, and these, the, go ahead. I just, I, I, I would have been ran like hell, probably 
a while ago in this situation. Yeah, fair. Be like, yeah, I'm going to come back with more <laughs> resources <laughs> at my disposal. He had his dog with him. I mean, yeah, and those just <laughs> just the things descending from the other thing are four feet wide. I'm cool on that. So these things, after they come out of the bottom of the craft, start rolling on the ground towards him. Nope. Making what he describes as a, quote, plopping, sucking sound. Plopping. Great. Yep. Love it. So I, th- I think... I think what was happening is like these spikes were going in and out of the ground. Oh, it was aerating the lawn. Basically, yeah. So I think he was hearing the sound of it like penetrating and then coming back out of the dirt as it came towards him. They were planting aliens. Perhaps. Perhaps. These two metal spheres then grabbed him. So they came up on either side of him. And something came out and like, grabbed him on either side from each one of these things okay like so it's it's not totally clear but also i'm getting most of this from uh there's a book called the denchment woods ufo incident by malcolm robinson awesome who was on site uh three days two days after this happened Mm. and and interviewed robert at that time sure and and he now also owns the pair of pants that robert was wearing when this happened that's we're gonna have to. He bought. He bought Bob's pants. We're gonna have to figure that one out either <laughs> later or now. Don't care which, but uh, gonna need some details there. I don't have them for you, unfortunately. Okay. So these things come up on either side of him, and something like comes out of these two spheres and hooks into his pants on either side. Okay. Um, he noticed the burning smell more strongly as these things got closer to him and he he thought that it might have been some sort of like toxic gas being released by these things because he was then very quickly unconscious okay fair (laughs) fair assessment of the situation the next thing he remembers he wakes up face down in that same clearing it's now empty the crafts and the two pokey sphere things are gone. Okay. His clothes are torn up. He's covered in cuts and bruises. And he estimates that he has been out for about 20 minutes. Okay. Which is a really long time to be unconscious. Yeah, you're not supposed to be unconscious that long. It's actually really bad for you. Yeah. So, not sure what happened there. but Well, also, unconscious is like a... Is a relative term, right? Like, I get, yeah, I guess more specifically, he has no memory of a period which he estimates to be about 20 minutes. Yeah, that's sort of what I was getting at there. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, Bobbert gets up and goes back to his truck. And he tries, he has a radio in his truck, tries to radio to his boss, I think. And he has no voice. He can't speak. Uh Uh-oh. So he starts driving, but he's so fucked up that he drives immediately into a ditch and gets his truck stuck in a ditch. God damn. You sent her too hard, bud. (laughs) Dude, we need need Sounders back. We got to figure it out. ASAP. We got to figure it out. We'll we'll research it. Okay, wait. should Should we put the call out? What? I mean, if anybody for technological help, technological assist. Hey, is there anyone with tech support <laughs> resources or knowledge <laughs> who knows how to do a remote call with three audio inputs? Yeah. Wait. Oh, I have an idea. Okay. Could we do a three-way FaceTime call and you just have a separate device with that input being in our call? Uh, maybe. Mm. I'd need a separate number, though, because my my phone and my computer are linked, or like a separate ID, you know? Just make a, can you just make like a fake email address? Probably, just make a new Apple ID. Yeah. Bullshit sounds at whatifpodcast.com. Solved it! On air production (laughs) meeting. All right, carry on. Anyway, so he's got no voice. He's very confused. Um, He's extremely thirsty. He's cut and he's bruised up, 
and he just wrecked his truck into a ditch. Dude's so having he, the he, worst day. Like, really yeah, not, the worst day. It's not going great. It's not even 11 a.m. yet. <laughs> it's broad goddamn daylight, and this guy <laughs> is just eating shit. <laughs> so he, he walks walks home or staggers home, and when he gets there, um, he's rambling, he's confused, he's, like, barely coherent, and his wife is at home and has no idea what the fuck is going on. No, no one and, does. No one. Does. I found I found an old Discovery Channel, like a Scottish Discovery Channel special about this oh. on YouTube, and it's incredible. And they interview his wife, and she's like standing in the doorway of their house, sort of reenacting it. And she goes, "Did you have an accident with your lorry? Your lorry?" And he says, "No, I've been attacked." And she goes, "By men?" He goes, "No, a spaceship." <laughs> she said, I thought, oh dear, there's no such thing. I better phone the doctor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, also, my hubby's inventing to- things. Totally were spaceships in 1979, but that's okay. Well, define spaceship, though. Ships that could go to space? Well, right, but I mean, I think she's saying that, like, he he wasn't, like, fist fighting a fucking... NASA like employee, a, a, or or just like a NASA rocket, you know? Right, right. Um, so she calls his boss to say, "Hey, do you know what the fuck is going on with Robert? Did you guys get into a wreck of some kind?" Have, he doesn't know what she's talking about. Have you had a couple too many, bud? So she calls his doctor, and the doctor comes over to check him out. Boss doesn't know anything. The doctor recommends that he go to the hospital. So he goes to the hospital, and after waiting for two hours, he got bored and went home. Mm. So he never saw a doctor at the hospital. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting choice. Uh huh. There was um, several days later a police investigation because they assumed that some sort of assault had taken place. Like the dude was pretty roughed up. He had some missing time. He was confused. So they decided to look into it, at least. Sure. That's valid. Yeah. And they go back out to this clearing where he claims he saw the spaceship and got attacked by the two spherical things. Yes. And they found and photographed flattened grass, 40 holes in the ground- about three and a half inches across. What? And uh, ladder-like marks, so in like pressed into the ground. So th- I think they're describing like you know those uh, like bulldozers le- have those like huge treads, like metallic treads. Yes. So it's like that, but it's only one of them. It's not in a pair. So it's just like a deep, thick line in the ground for like a foot or two across. Yeah, but it's like segmented, like a ladder or a like really wide tread would be. Oh, so there are many marks. It's like if you it's like if you took a ladder, laid it down on the ground, and jumped on it a bunch, and like we're able to push it several inches down into the ground and then take it away. Got it. Okay, makes sense. Um, yeah, so that 40 holes in the ground, about three and a half inches across. Um, and the holes, they were, they formed like a sort of a semicircle. They they were like in a pattern in the ground. Whoa, that's such a trip. And it was only in the clearing and there was no trace of this stuff like entering or leaving this clearing. It only was in this one area. Okay. So the police then contacted the Livingston Development Corporation, which I don't that was the uh the company that Robert worked for. But I don't know I I, I don't I don't know if they were asking like did you guys have equipment out here or do you know if right. anyone else would have because they would have had to clear it with you first. Right, right, right. Um, and one of the investigators said, quote, 
After examining every piece of machinery they had up there, we didn't find anything to match. These marks just arrived. They didn't come from anywhere or go anywhere. They just arrived as though a helicopter or something had landed from the sky. An object of several tons had stood there, but there was nothing to show that it had been driven or towed away. There appeared to be no rational explanation for these marks. Can you... What's like the... Did they give like a full spread? for? Because it just said like flattened grass, but like, did, like is there a square footage for the flattened grass? Um... No, but I'm going to pull up the photos because those photos that they took um, do still exist somewhere. It looks like this clearing is maybe – so I'm looking at a photo of Robert in this clearing, and then there's like a fenced-off area where the actual craft would have been. Okay. Okay. And it looks like the like the whole clearing is maybe, oh, I'm guessing, but maybe like 50 or 60 feet across in a, roughly in a circle. Okay. So it's like and a sizable launch pad, if you will. The area that was affected looks to be roughly, I don't know, 25 feet across. So like essentially what he he described the the craft being about 30 feet across and that looks about right. Okay. Okay. Um and then yeah, the whole clearing is maybe about twice that size. And the and the the puncture marks were inside of the flattened grass area. Correct. Yeah. Got it. So like the the grass was flattened then there were these uh, the 40, like, puncture holes in the ground, and then the ladder or tread marks were all inside that, like, maybe 30-foot across circle. Okay. Got it. And the police investigation basically turned up mm, nothing <laughs> other than, like, we don't know, and it seems like something landed from the sky. And it must have weighed several tons. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else you're going to find there. Right. I mean, I mean I unless there's they, other evidence you could potentially. I mean, you, you could do other investigation into like, is there, you know, was there machinery in that area that day or scheduled to be around there? Or yeah. if they're like. There were nearby military installations at the time. So, were you guys doing anything out here, sure. or do you do you know of anyone who sometimes does stuff out here? I don't know. Or are there other materials on or in or near the ground that would give us more clues to like what the fuck this yeah. shit was? Yeah. They didn't get a whole lot. They the forensic experts, whatever that meant in the seventies, yeah, um, examined his clothes that he was wearing that got all torn up. And came to the conclusion that they had been torn by something hooking into them and pulling upward. So there there were rips on either side of his pants, like just below the pocket, sort of like mid-thigh area. And it looks like there may be, I don't know, maybe like four or five inch long tears in the pants. And it looks like there's a point where something went in and then ripped, like sort of in a straight line. This is fucked up, but I I feel like my guy got like fucking arcade claw machined, <laughs> like mm-hmm. just straight up like. Zzz, zzz, Basically, whoop. yeah. <laughs> You're coming with us. So they weren't able to determine a- anything like DNA wise or chemically or anything like that. Um, and there was never an official explanation for what happened. Sure. Yeah, I mean, other I, than Ro- you kinda, Robert saying a UFO got me. Yeah, I mean, you kind of got to walk away from that at a certain point, right? Like, if there's nothing else on the ground, n- there's no other leads. It's just like that's a weird clearing with some weird shit in it, and that guy ripped his pants. And like, dude had a pretty bad day, but ultimately came away from it 
mostly okay. Yeah, and you can't really like he re- he wrecked his own truck. <laughs> Which, I mean, he deserved. He was in a bad spot, having a rough day, and, you know. He deserved to wreck his truck? I mean, like, he, he earned wrecking his own truck inadvertently on the way home from having a... Oh, you're saying that we we can uh, forgive him for wrecking his own truck? Yeah, yeah, like, it's not like got he... It, got it, It's, not, it's understandable. It's understandable yeah, yeah. why he would why he would potentially not be, like, in the best mindset after I going through an it. experience such as this one. I thought you meant it more in a, like, he fucking had it coming kind of way. No, no. This is not like a fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck him and his truck he rode in on. Uh, so he maintained until he died in 07 that this is what happened, and no one was ever able to establish that something different had happened. Hmm. However, I have some theories that we'll get to in a minute. Lit. Um, some of them sort of make sense, and some of them absolutely don't. I will say this does explain why he no longer owns his pants. <laughs> because that was not abundantly clear earlier. <laughs> and now that I know that his pants I, I like I like that that was like really a sticking point of this story for you. Why doesn't Bob have his pants? I mean, look, I have not ever gone up to a guy and been like, "Hey man, let me get those pants. <laughs> well, and, not yet. Hey, bro, how much for those pants, though? Like, I've never said that to anyone in my whole life. I've never seen anyone say that to anyone in my whole life. So so Is there- it was a very random fact to be like, and this one guy that knew this guy, he owned his pants. Like, that's... A- well, I also thought that was funny, and that's why I brought it up. But now it makes sense that the reason he bought his pants is because his pants had a... His pants had an experience. <laughs> are, is there anyone who's, is, are there any like uh, collector's item pants that you would, you would purchase? Like, like what would it take for me to walk up to someone and be like, hey bro, let me get those pants. Or like maybe not in person, but like at auction. Are there any like commemorative pants that you'd want to own? <laughs> Interesting. Like, it, um, is my purpose wearing them or just like owning them regardless? I don't, I don't think Malcolm, whatever is Malcolm Robinson, author of this book, probably wears that pair of 50 year old pants he, around. He just, he, he frames them and goes like, Hey, one time these aliens played the fucking claw game with my guy and rip, right, ripped his like, pants up. These pants Pretty. have seen an these pants have seen an alien and I'm really into aliens, so I gotta own these pants. These pants have seen an alien and I've seen these pants. <laughs> these pants have seen some shit. And I've seen I've seen the pants that have seen that alien, which means by proxy I have seen <laughs> an alien. I went to eBay and looked at memorabilia and searched pants and I'm not finding much. Uh, the honestly, one of the one of the first and only things like because I was trying to think of like distinctive pants. And, right. and one of the only things I could think of was the Han Solo pants where he rock, he's got like the blue ones with the red like stripe down the side. I remember thinking those were oh, pretty yeah, badass yeah, yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah, so what about like, you know, like the pants that Harrison Ford wore in the first Star Wars movie? Uh, yeah, but I don't think I would like spend my own money on them. Like I wouldn't be like, yo, I got to own those sure. pants. Like they're cool pants, but I don't think I would be like I need those pants. Right. I could maybe see like um I don't know, like a pair of like a pair of like game worn like Chicago Bulls Michael Jordan warm ups. Like that would Ugh. be kinda cool. It's gross. Not just the warm ups, not like the fucking sweated through and then stuffed them in a plastic bag forever. So I I Googled pants auction. Fantastic. <laughs> And the pants that Olivia Newton-John wore in Greece. Oh, sure. The leather ones? Yeah, it says black satin. I don't know. I've okay. never seen Greece. Sat- All right. There's a movie I've seen that you haven't. Cool. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Let's go, baby. They sold for $162,000. That's too much. At, at Julian's Auctions in California. Mm. And they were bought by... The founder of Spanx. Oh, okay. 
All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will be displayed at the Spanx headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. I okay. Were they like a design inspiration or something? That's a weird. I, I mean, they're they were skin tight. Apparently, uh, maybe that's important to the woman who founded Spanx. Yes. I don't. Oh, here we go. Vintage pants and trousers for sale at liveauctioneers.com. Here we go. But is that just going to be old pants? Uh, Not like <laughs> this, is just, this is just old pants. Because old pants is like <laughs> put it on the list. Old pants, <laughs> yeah. dude. There are some vintage Versace puzzle print jeans on the first page uh, that are very lit, and there are two pairs available. We could have matching Versace jeans. I'm kind of into my this. Guy. Patreon.com slash what if podcast. Wow. Yeah, these are just these are not commemorative pants. These are just old pants. Yeah, see. All right. The the only other thing I could think of that just actually popped into my head was I was trying to think of like famous pants. And <laughs> you ever I'm gonna Google famous pants while we're here. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Are there famous pants? I was thinking of like uh, the dude. Um, who's the golfer that like smokes and drinks and like eats fast food and shit that wears the crazy pants? John Daly. John Daly. Some John Daly pants would be kind of cool. You think there's like some wow. John Daly pants up for auction? That didn't that dude like always wear fucking just like bonkers pants? Yes, and I just found I didn't find any for sale, but I did find a list of. <laughs> The 36 craziest pairs of John Daly's pants ranked. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we can go all the way down this rabbit hole, but I really want to. Like, really uh, want to. I mean, the only reason we can't is because you guys can't see it with us. It's totally worth looking at. Okay. Um, I'm I'm going to skip ahead to number one and try and describe it to you, though, before we leave this topic. Okay. Num- uh, well, number one is just a pair of American flag pants. That shouldn't. That's too easy. That shouldn't be number one. Yeah, that's um, boring. Ooh, cow print pants coming in at number three. Just like straight up, like splotchy cow pattern. Yep, black and white. Very loose or in the leg. Very tight around the waist and crotch. Uh oh, all over print pineapple. Just pineapples printed all over his pants. Fire, dude. I, I think we need to try to put a pants section in on shop.whatifpodcast.com and just recreate John Daly pants. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a fire fucking thing to have. He's it's, got an all over SpongeBob print, although it's mostly Patrick. Let's go. Um, British flag. Okay. Yo, so in almost every one of these photos, it's like waist down, right? And in sure. almost every photo, he has a golf club in one hand and either a cigarette or a drink in the other. Oh, God bless him, man. <laughs> God bless him. I hope he lives to be 120. <laughs> I think he's just so fantastic. Oh, fuck. Dude, <laughs> there's one. So he's got these, like, crazy polka dot pants on. Yep. And it's, like, this really nice photo of him. Like, uh, it's, like, real shallow focus. So, like, his, his pants and the putter sure. are in focus and, the the like, the... The green is just out of focus. And there's a like 42 ounce McDonald's soft drink cup sitting on the green next to it. Yes, dude. Isn't he like a notorious <laughs> Diet Coke drinker? I think he drinks like 60 ounces of Diet like Coke though. a day or something. Oh, this fucking guy. I just had to look him up. Did you know that John Daly is only 53 years old? He's looked like it for at least 30 years. And he looks like he's 70. <laughs> yeah. Oh right. wait. Anyway, back to the alien story. Oh, I've, I just realized I don't like John Daly. Why? Because of his political beliefs. Oh well, we can like his pants. We can like his pants, and we do like his pants. But that's all. Fair enough. All right. Uh, carry on. Sorry, we got. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this is, uh, his Wikipedia is fucking. It's a roller coaster, buddy. He's. The man, Na- the man 19- is a walking roller coaster. 1994, suspended. 1996 through 2000 is just called Struggles on his Wikipedia <laughs> page. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> we should all be so lucky. Dude, and hold on. 1996 to 2000, Struggles. 2004, Comeback. 2006 to 2014, Struggles. <laughs> 2006 to 2014. That's a lot of years, yeah, my bro. Four years of struggles, a comeback, and then eight years of struggles. Oh, boy. 
And then Sorry the last the last blood. section the last section is incidents during golf tournaments. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this fucking goof. Incidents. Oh boy. Incidents and struggles being sections in your Wikipedia page tells you like literally everything you need to know about a human being. Most of these are like the first one, he shot an 18 on a par 5 in a tournament when he hit six <laughs> balls into the water. <laughs> Bro, you know he was just so pissed about it. He was like, I'm fucking shooting this shot. I'm not taking a drop. I'm shooting this shot until it goes in. In the 2000 U.S. These are in like majors and shit, too. In the 2000 U.S. Open, he shot a 14 on the par 5 18th hole and withdrew after an opening round of 83. Daly hit three golf balls into the Pacific Ocean and hit another two into a backyard next to the fairway. Beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, truly beautiful. <laughs> and then he quit and went home after the first round. Oh, man. He has his own clothing line, so I don't know if we're going to be able to recreate his pants on our website. Oh, man. Anyway, back to the alien story. It, that man doesn't own pineapples or the American flag, God damn it! <laughs> he certainly does not own the concept of pineapples. Ryan, let's take a quick break to talk about better help before we get back to our alien story. So it's probably tough for a lot of you to get to therapy right now. And if that is something you need in your life, BetterHelp can bridge the gap uh, until you're able to get back to your regular therapist. You can get help on your own time at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist at any time. BetterHelp has licensed professional counselors who specialize in depression, stress, anxiety, anger, family conflicts, LBGT matters, and a whole bunch more. Anything you share with your therapist is confidential. And if you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. It's available throughout the U.S. and worldwide uh, on desktop, mobile web, Android, or iOS apps. And BetterHelp is convenient, professional, and affordable. If you need somebody to talk to to just work through some of this incredibly stressful shit that's going on right now, go to BetterHelp.com and use discount code WHATIF to get 10% off your first month. You just fill out a questionnaire that will help them assess your needs and get you matched with a counselor that you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash what if. So adding to the, I guess, credibility of this case or the intrigue of this case is the fact that there were several other UFO, port, UFO reports in the area uh, the day before or the same day that Robert Taylor encountered a UFO. Okay. So the night prior, um, a woman named Josephine Quigley, with four other people, saw a stationary circle of lights hovering in the sky. Word. Uh, that same night, a little bit later, two gentlemen named Steve and Alan Little saw an object hovering in the sky, about a hundred, they estimated about 150 meters up. Later that same night, so this is all on uh, November 8th, Someone named A. Ferguson saw an illuminated flying ruler headed in the direction of the Denchmont Woods. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely not what our boy Bobbert saw, but an illuminated flying ruler is something else. Strange nonetheless. Strange nonetheless. The morning of uh, Bobbert's encounter, Graham Kennedy saw a bright orange torch-shaped object moving very quickly just a few meters off the ground. And he was, when he saw this thing, about three miles north of where Taylor had his encounter that same night. Okay, so we're, oh. we've got some... Okay, that's, like better, All, that's better than most of the stories we have for corroborating reports. That same morning, Anne McGregor heard a hissing sound coming from the sky, and when she looked up, saw a bright yellow light descending toward the Denchmont Woods. Mm -hmm. So we've got weird shit flying around, lights in the sky, all within like a three to five mile radius of where Robert saw a UFO within a 24 to 48 hour window. That's, uh, I mean, that, like I said, like that's, like we don't normally get that many corroborating reports. I mean, they're not exactly corroborating because yeah. they're not describing like it's a yellow light in the sky. It's a circle of lights in the sky. 
it's a flying ruler. It's an orange torch, and it's a thirty foot wide UFO with little spiky balls. Yeah. Okay. Yes, for sure. I guess what I mean by corroborating is like a lot of times, like I'm trying to think of what's the one that happened in Tennessee. What's that guy's name? UFO sighting in Tennessee. Wasn't it the guy? They, him and his buddy went to the river and they fucked them all up. He's the guy that. Oh, the the Pascagoula ones. Yeah, that's the one. Was that Tennessee? I thought that is that Mississippi, isn't it? Um, I don't know. The South is Whatever. sort of the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know what you're talking about now at least. Uh the um like uh, that one was just those two guys going to the river and like fucking having their experience and coming back and being like that shit was crazy and everyone's like it sounds pretty crazy. Anyway, take care guys. <laughs> and like yeah. This is this is at least a couple different people being like no, there was some weird shit over there. I saw it happening like at that time, around that time or like whatever. Ryan, will you Google Pascagoula UFO quickly? Yes. And then and then click on the Pascagoula abduction Wikipedia page. Pascagoula UFO. Really fun to say. Pretty fun to type. Pascagoula UFO. I spelled it wrong. I clicked on the page. Will you take a look at Calvin Parker's photo on the right side of that page? Calvin, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's having a ball. Uh huh. Uh-huh. He's next. He's y'all. He's posing next to a mannequin, uh, wearing alien clothes uh, with an alien mask over the face. Who is at least a foot taller than him? And he looked and he's very wearing... unhappy about the entire situation, even though he seems like he is conceptually happy about the situation. And he's also wearing a hat that says something about fishing. It's one of those, like, women love me, fish fear me type of joints. My other truck is a fishing boat. Or <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> or, you know, whatever that is. Yes. Okay. So I have some possible explanations or proposed explanations for this sighting. Are you ready for them? Yes. These also these explanations are proposed in the uh, towards the end of Malcolm Robinson, aka the Pants Owners book, and then he goes through why he doesn't think each of them is correct and ranks them on a scale of zero to ten. Oh yes, can I guess the rankings? <laughs> Do you have the rankings up? I wrote some of them down, but I could pull the book back up and uh, I could give you all of them okay. if you want to guess. So to clarify, zero is like there's no chance that this is actually what happened, and ten is like that's 100% ch- exactly what happened. Correct in his mind. Correct. Okay, love it. And also, I kind of want to. I, mean, I kind of want to try to guess. Okay, I, I'm pulling up the whole book again. Give me one second. All right, bet. Um, go to yeah, that's where I want to be. Okay. Um. All right, I think I got it. So the first one is ball lightning. A guy named Stuart Campbell suggested that Robert encountered ball lightning, which then caused him to have a seizure, which then caused him to hallucinate. Oh, interesting. Would you like to take a guess at well, first, would you like to weigh in on what you think about that theory and then take a guess at what um, our friend Malcolm thinks of that theory? Yeah, so that's a shitty theory. And okay. the reason that's a shitty theory is I feel like ball lightning gets brought up a lot in some of the stuff that we talk about, but the but the real like the real thing about that is like, yes, that could fuck with a person and that could fuck with their like psyche or memory like i believe all of that and uh and think that like that could potentially explain something but it doesn't account for any of the physical evidence in the space of like drilled holes and like fucking ladder level marks and also it's a lot of specifics that would i mean like i don't know if you had a seizure and a hallucination to be able to remember all of those specifics about what did happen even though obviously he has some missing time just seems like pretty highly unlikely to me. I think this guy is going to give it a, I'm going to say a two. He actually gave it a five out of 10. 
Yeah, I don't like it. I it doesn't make sense to me either. I this seems like a just a terrible theory. Um, I as far as I know, lightning does not give people seizures. Robert did not have issues with seizures. Seizures don't cause people to hallucinate. Sure. And lightning doesn't leave complex sets of I'm saying things on the ground. I'm saying. Ryan, my Canadians doing flips and yelling about it, TikTok. Yep. Uh, apparently goes against Facebook's community standards and it has been removed from posting it in the Facebook group. What? <laughs> of all the wild shit that people have posted on Facebook and in our group even, some Canadian sledding has been removed. How is that Because it goes against Facebook's community standards. I don't fucking know. Facebook can eat a dick. Is it because there was a swear word in it? You can also, swear look, in videos on Facebook? What the also, hell, Also, look, if you, po- if you put any more coronavirus shit in our Facebook group- It's getting deleted. I- it's getting deleted, and if you do it multiple times, you are getting deleted. Sorry. <laughs> we don't need it. We don't need to Nobody talk about that it. shit no more. We we are all talking about that shit way too much anyway. We get it. It sucks. It, your memes are not helping. Okay. Theory number two. Um, Robert saw Venus in the sky- Venus gave him a seizure, and then he hallucinated. Your thoughts? Say that one more time. He saw the planet Venus in the sky. Okay. Remember, it was it was ten a.m. By the way. Yes. Um, the 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 brightness of Venus at ten a.m. caused him to have a seizure, and then he hallucinated that he saw a UFO and got attacked by little spiky orb guys. Who who was whose theory was this one? This is actually the same guy who proposed the ball lightning theory, so I'm not really sure how um, you, you you have both of those things bouncing around I, in your big dumb head. I, yeah, this is terrible. This is just well, ridiculous. Malcolm agrees, and this one got a zero out of ten. Great. Yeah, that I was going to say, that's like the worst thing I've ever heard. Okay, um, theory number three, a mo- anti, mm, excuse me, a mine or anti-tank vehicle. So the short version is there are two military, or there were at least two military installations nearby. Uh, Robert came across some sort of military vehicle that he was not familiar with. It scared him, and he thought it was a UFO. Yeah. So... I... Yes, that's possible. I do think anti like like mind there are like mine farming devices that have like those types of probes that go into the ground to try to strike the mines. They're like metal balls that do that. I've heard of that before. Okay. I guess that's an interesting concept. But it doesn't make a lot of sense that he would like pass out and have missing time and like rip pants and shit and like be abducted by those things like <laughs> that I don't know you would think you'd want to let people know that that was happening in that area and or there would be some record of that happening in that area yeah and also like if somebody was fucking manning or driving some device that was doing that type of work they'd be like oi bruv <laughs> Right. Get out my fucking way. Yeah. Yeah, you'd want to let people know. Not just like fucking. Not only are you driving a 30 foot wide tank, you're looking for mines. Yeah. (laughs) Um, this one gets a one out of ten. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um we have another one that gets a zero out of ten, which is uh some sort of uh let's see. It was not a dome-shaped ob- object. What it really was was an Adamski-type flying saucer. Uh, a Adamski? As in George Adamski, A-D-A-M-S-K-I. Never met him. I don't I don't remember what that means. Uh, let's see. There, uh, I don't know. Whatever. He thinks it's the wrong kind of UFO, I guess. <laughs> But it's still a UFO? 
I don't, I, you know, Ryan. You saw the wrong UFO, bud. This stuff gets less fun the more questions you ask sometimes. True story. Um, okay. This one seems most reasonable to me, and I don't remember how the author ranked it, so we, we'll go through it together and then see what we think. The third, or whatever, final theory we'll look at is poisonous wild berries. Oh. And the book references a an article called Spaceships, Spheres, and the Devil's Herb. Or The Devil's Lettuce? As as the no, different, it turns out. Uh the Devil's Herb, if you're in Scotland. Herb. Um You're a herb. Turns out turns out that that citation is actually a blog spot entry. Fantastic. Yep. Written by David Slater uh, in 2010, it's a very it's a very good post actually, and I think explains this better than anything else. So there is this plant called deadly nightshade, which put, grows put it on the or list. grew yes definitely grows or did grow in that area. It usually flowers between July and August and produces cherry like bear like small blackberries that can be found. And harvested between August and November. So this was November 9th. Fits our, our time frame. The berries contain something called atropine or atropine, which can kill you in large doses, but in non-lethal doses can induce hallucination. Uh, quick aside, there is absolutely already a band called Deadly Nightshade and also Hell yeah. and also a song by Megadeth called Deadly Nightshade. Nice. Let's go. Could we name our band Megadeth's Deadly Nightshade? I don't see why not. <laughs> I do. I see several reasons. Um, the symptoms of non-lethal poisoning include loss of balance, staggering, headache, Rash, dry mouth, mouth and throat, slurred speech, confusion, hallucinations, and delirium. Sure. It can also include imaginary odors, a sense of suffocation, violent headache, blah, 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 blah. So most of the things, if not all of the things that Robert experienced after his uh, sighting. Yeah, like accurate. He was very confused. He was off balance. He couldn't speak, et cetera. Okay. So reading directly from the like conclusion of this uh, Devil's Herb article, he says, Having established that Belladonna, which is another name for Deadly Nightshade, is present in the area, it is not implausible that during his inspection of the forest, Robert Taylor came across the plant and handled it in some way. Perhaps he was mindful of the plant's harmful qualities and uprooted it, crushing the leaves and or berries in his hands, implying that it could get like absorbed through the skin. Right, right, right. Moreover, if he was unaware of the plant's toxic nature, he may have na- naively consumed one or more of the berries before continuing with his check of the woods. He's having a snack. Each, either scenario would introduce atropine into his system either by oral ingestion or transdermally, a.k.a. through the skin. Though one would expect a forester to be familiar with dangerous plants as part of his work, the sheer rarity of a species may bring about ignorance. Ignorance. Furthermore, when asked if the Forestry Commission has a policy towards the identification of poisonous plants, they responded, we do not specifically train our staff to identify them simply because they don't need to eat them as part of their job. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you eat the berries, that's on you, man. You figure your own you shit a, out. You had a lunch break. You didn't need to eat the berries. You're supposed to watch the forest, not eat it, Bob. <laughs> so what do we think of this theory? You know, I actually kind of like it, and I actually kind of wonder, like, I do feel like, well, I was about to say something real dumb. going to say it anyway. Great. Uh, a lot of... A lot of people who have experiences do have them outside, and obviously it's easier to, like, see the night sky outside or a large craft that has landed when you are not, like, in your house. So I know that that makes sense, but it does feel like a lot of people are, like, hiking or hunting or fishing or, like, out, like out 
oot and a boot, if you will. <laughs> I will. And so part of me wonders, like, I don't know. That's an interesting explanation for this specific situation based on it being applicable for the time of year and applicable for um, for the location, but also, like, could that, could that concept be a thing that is... I'm not saying for everybody's experience or for multiple experiences, but like, could that explain some other experiences where people have been like, yeah, we were just out camping and like thought we were doing the right thing, but ended up, or, you know, especially if that stuff can actually be absorbed through the skin, because then, I mean, I wouldn't have realized that and realized that like, Oh no, I didn't eat anything weird, but I am hallucinating because of that plant that I handled earlier. Right. Like you, you, in your mind, you're going, this shit's crazy. I'm tripping out right now, but you don't, you don't and, have a, like, you don't, un, you don't know your own inception point for it. Yeah. You'd never make that connection. Right. Um, the author ranks this four out of 10, which if you're keeping score at home is one less than the ball lightning theory. The ball lightning seizure hallucination theory is more plausible than this one. Apparently. I mean, it doesn't it does, inspl- explain any of the physical stuff. Right, but none of these really do. So I think, you know, like the hallucination ones obviously don't explain why there are a bunch of marks on the ground. Sure. So I, I think, and I think we commonly make a mistake by trying to look for one explanation for things like this. Right. And like, there must be one thing that can explain all the weird shit that happens. Right. When in reality, it could be there was some machinery out there that wasn't scheduled to be or was some covert military thing. And also, he encountered it after he was tripping balls off of the forest cherries. Right, right, right. So it it does a better job than any of these other ones at explaining part of the story, at least. Right. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's it. I think that's all the the other explanations are sillier or much much longer. Got it, got it. What do we think? Did Bobbert see a, a UFO? I mean, I'm not I'm not super satisfied with any of the explanations that say he didn't. All right, well there it is. It's settled. We solved it. Aliens. It was aliens. So you're little saying spike, there's a chance. little spiky orb. Little spiky orb aliens got him. They tried to take his pants. They. They tried to put him in the arcade game. <laughs> and he was like, I will not be a prize in your alien arcade game. But dude, maybe that's what it all is. Everybody that gets abducted is just getting put into a giant alien arcade game. And aliens go to like alien Chuck E. Cheese and they put mm. alien dollars into an alien machine and they try to take home a human pet. You ever wonder why they decide to go with a rat as their mascot for a place that serves food to children? Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah. Um, why, a, why a pizza rat? Whoa, pizza rat. Didn't put that connection together from when that New York pizza rat thing happened. Yeah, it's um, real, life, real life Chuck E. Cheese. Real life Chuck subway. E. Cheese. You know, not, not wouldn't have been my business decision. I'll say that much. And yet, why it did, was a good one. Why did Circus Circus have an animal band shouldn't have animals because in a restaurant. they fucking ripped they did rip they did rip they were right. they were also low-key terrifying you want to leave the the folks with anything i would love to leave folks with anything uh <laughs> <laughs> we, if i had anything i'd leave it all to y'all uh we like we said earlier at the top of the show, we are doing a uh, we're doing a little bit of extra content over on the Patreon uh, while Spencer and I have a little more time and while y'all might have a little extra time to indulge in it. So go to patreon.com slash what if podcast. Also follow us on Instagram at what if pod. We're going to hop over there after the episode and chat with y'all for a little bit. Um, I'll probably dump some of that extra content into the main feed here and there too. Yeah, totally, so, totally. We're not trying to hold a hostage under, over there. We're just trying to make more shit while we're doing shit. That, we understand that money is tight right about now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That's not the point. The point is like we're making shit because people want more shit, and we have more time to make shit. So we're gonna put more shit out into the universe right now. That's that's but the mo- point. Money's tight over here too. So what if podcast? Is on Patreon. Yeah, buddy. Um, outside of that, you can send us an email at hi at whatifpodcast.com. Voicemails are 612-246-4614. 
Uh, we've got a bunch of those recently, and we appreciate all the love and stuff. So thank you guys for sending all the emails and leaving all the voicemails. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. Go to shop.whatifpodcast.com. Get some John Daly pants. <laughs> love you. Bye. Love you.